Thanks for joining our YouTube channel. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button to join our community. That way you get notified each and every week a message pops up. With that being said, we pray that this message encourages and inspires you to take one step closer to Jesus. Good morning, risers. How's everybody doing? What is up, everybody? Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're new to our church, my name is Brent. I get the privilege of being your lead pastor, and we're going to continue to experience God together today. It's going to be awesome. Hey, did you know last week we had at least one person physically healed in our church? Yep. Love that. Love that. Love that. Love that. Also, a couple quick things. Next week, we start a series called Build Your Tell. It's going to be incredible. If you're like, what in the world does that mean? Trust me, you'll figure it out next week. Be here, bring somebody with you. It's going to be incredible. Uh, really excited about this next series. I was just sharing with our guest speaker this morning about it, and, and I get all excited about it. I uh, also want to let you know this, that Joel and Brittany, Brittany Maylett, as you probably know by now, they were our young adult leaders for quite a while in our church and served in many other areas, are planting a church, Salvation City Church, and this is their last Sunday with us. And uh, so they'll be in the 11 o'clock service, and we'll pray for them and kind of send them out. But if you see them, uh, they're not going to be strangers. They'll still be around here or there. We're still very close with them. Uh, but this is their last Sunday with us as now they start their launch team meetings on Sunday and prepare for their official church launch, which we're very, very excited about. So I uh, just wanted to fill you in on a couple of those things. Uh, also, <clears throat> actually, I have to go this way. Um, one of my favorite movies of all times is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Anybody with me? I know, showing my age, some of you are like, that's so old. Uh, I grew up watching that movie all the time. And maybe partially because one of my favorite actors of all times is Morgan Freeman. Okay, if you don't like Morgan Freeman, I just don't like you, okay? <laughs> Morgan Freeman is the man. Like, he's up there with Denzel Washington. Every movie Morgan Freeman in is, is good, like Denzel. And uh, so I like Morgan Freeman. There's a great mo a moment in the movie uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, where this little European girl looks at Morgan Freeman, who is probably the first black person she's ever seen, and she asked this really beautiful question as a little girl. She said, did God paint you? And I loved Morgan Freeman's response. He said, yes, because God loves wonderful colors. Like that's theology right there. Like it may not have come out of your Bible, but that is beautiful right there. And I love that because we can always learn from people different than us. And God loves wonderful colors, and God loves to paint in different colors. And uh, we've had the Black History Conference, the celebration of Black History, all weekend this weekend. It's been phenomenal. And uh, one of our speakers this weekend has been a man by the name of Maseyahu. Everybody say that, Maseyahu. Yep, not the easiest one to say, but we'll get it by the time we're done. And uh, he has just been incredible, and he's here to share with us this morning. Uh, he leads a, a redeemed Messianic uh, Jewish uh, 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 church in Virginia. Virginia, where he is a, a leader in that church and leading the church. Uh, he also has 23 years of teaching and education experience as a historian and an educator. And beyond that, he's just a mighty man of God. I've been able to spend a lot of time with him over the last couple of days, and I just love the way he's passionate for the Lord, the Lord's work, looking at things from a Hebrew perspective. And I love that because it's different than a lot of people in this room, and we can learn from people who are different than us. Amen? Amen. So without further ado, would you put your hands together for my friend, Masiahu? As we would say in Hebrew, boker tov, boker tov, boker tov. That means good morning. All right. Um, so I'm Masiahu Israel, and uh, you know I always smile because when uh, Messianic Jews come into uh, a lot of time church spaces, they get in trouble within the the Jewish community um, because you know many. Uh, within the traditional Jewish community, whether it's Ashkenazi, Mizrahi, Sephardi, whatever, um, they're, they're very, there's a lot of emotion and a lot of uh, built-up pain over the years because of persecution around the world. And so um, a lot of times people get, they, they get very uneasy. But we're going to have a good time today. And we're going to be able to show that... Um, that we can come into this space and into this place and share, um, and it can be a wonderful experience. Um, so I am a, a descendant of West African Jews. Uh, if you've ever heard of the Ashanti, the ancient Ashanti Empire, I was, uh, it was a great opportunity to uh, work with some folks that I know to 
actually trace uh, my lineage back a little while ago. There are oral traditions that exist amongst uh, some pockets of African-American people. And I don't know, how many people were here yesterday? All right, all right, I appreciate it. So you, you know a little bit about me. And so um, they actually uh, ended up tracing uh, my matrilineal DNA, shout out to my mother, Barbara Israel, and um, traced it back 3,000 years to the Akan. And, and, and to this day, there are tribes, uh, uh, groups of people within the, 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 uh, the ethnic group called the Akan, uh, the Sefwi and others who, who practice uh, an ancient form of, of Judaism, or what we say, Yahadut, right, which is the correct terminology. So I know most people have never seen or heard or had that experience, but I'm here and afterwards you can shake my hand and all of that as the novelty. Um, today what I wanna do is, and I'm, I'm moving stuff already, what's going on here? I, I've got started early. Let's see, if, can, I get this, can I get this working? All right, something ain't working here. It's all good. I wanna get back to that first screen. Okay, let's see if that works. Okay, I think I got it now. All right, thank you. So what I wanna do today is for the little time that we have together is to just take you a little bit into the world of the scriptures and attempt to get that Eastern lens on what it is that we study today. So we're gonna do just a brief little Torah study today, uh, a word for life and power. Um, the book of Numbers in the Hebrew is called Be Midbar. Can you say that, Be Midbar? Can you get that, ar? can you get that on there? Be Midbar, Be Midbar. And uh, it, it, it really is like in the wilderness, right, uh, uh, its meaning. And so we're going to talk about this today and, uh, and, 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 and walk you through some things that hopefully you can apply to life. Um, I'm a Messianic uh, believer, um, and I came to know Messiah uh, probably around the 1992, somewhere around there. Um, and had that life-changing transformation. And uh, I am so thankful because so many of my brothers and sisters, according to the flesh, do not know the Messiah of Israel. And he is the one whom to know right is life eternal. And I am not ashamed of his good news of what is called the gospel, or we say besra, for it is the power unto salvation. Now, look at this word here. I, I didn't know y'all were looking at this while I'm looking at you, so you've already got this in advance. But this is a Hebrew terminology here, and you see it spelled a lot of times H-A-L-L-E-L-U-J-A-H, right? But people don't say hallelujah. They say what? Hallelujah. Many people don't know. You're speaking Hebrew all the time. I heard people in the church like, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's Hebrew. How many people knew that? It's okay if you didn't. It's Hebrew. So you're speaking Hebrew. So um, it actually is, a, is in a command form, and it means you praise Yah. That's what it literally means. And we've heard in many of, of the African-American churches, they'll say it's the highest praise that you can give God. Why? It's a holdover. See, this is what's so Im important and powerful. I showed a slide yesterday about uh, from the 1770s that showed a kingdom called Judah in West Africa. The kingdom of Judah. And we went through some of the old texts from the 1800s where they said that there were people there who lived there that were Jews in West Africa. Now, you've got these you know, different groups and all of these, you know, I, I talked about some of those groups yesterday that have this racial situation, all that stuff. No, no, no. That's just a trick of the enemy. What you have to understand is that some, not all, but there were some people who came to the shores of America that had a tradition 
Some were from the Akan, some were from the Ashanti Empire, some were from the Fulani. And they carried with them these vestiges. Don't you wonder why so many African American people so freely accepted a belief in the Bible, a belief in the biblical narrative, even though the people that were abusing them in enslavement were giving them this? What would make you do it? There was something in them that was connecting with what was in the Bible. This is why Harriet Tubman was called Moses. This is why Nat Turner was reading the Bible, Gabriel Prosser reading the Bible, and many of enslaved people, though not always having the understanding, but yearning and seeing themselves as the same people in bondage. And this is a holdover. And I, I visited so many, you know, um, uh, country churches, as they call them, and, you know, I've got family members in, in all kinds of religious beliefs, but one of my grandmothers used to attend an old country church, and I used to always hear them say, it's the highest praise you can give God. Hallelujah. I want you to think about the power of this word. Now, in English, we say hallelujah, right? But if you're really putting the emphasis in the Hebrew, it's hallelujah, because the emphasis is on this great and mighty name. If you've got Psalm 68 and 4 in the New King James Version, it'll be right there. It'll say, sing praises unto God, extol him that rides upon the heavens by his name, Yah. Hallelujah. So what I want you to do right now is practice it in a Hebrew way. I know we say hallelujah, but now I want you to say hallelujah. 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 See, worship is, is, is in every part of our life. And there doesn't need to be one instrument going for you to be able to go into the holy place. I want you to understand that this word is your ticket in. The book of Tehillim, Psalm says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So if you're looking for his presence, if you're looking to invoke his goodness, if you're looking to invoke his power, Hallelujah! Now, look at what's circled. That in the Hebrew are the two letters Yod. Let me hear you say Yod and He. Yod He. Yod He are those two letters in Hebrew that spell the name Yah. Very powerful. Take a look here. Now, you'll hear me periodically say, this is the Hebrew word. It's the full Hebrew form of the Messiah's name. If those of you who are handy with your electronic devices, if you go to, um, what, Hebrews 4 and 8 or Acts 7.45, in some of the older versions, like if you get a King James version or something, it'll say, uh, and Jesus, something, 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 but it's not talking about Jesus, it's talking about Joshua from, from you know, T Tanakh days or what's called Old Testament days. And you read that, Acts 7, 45 or Acts 4 and 8, I think, are those two. Look at, it, look at them in different uh, versions and go and get an older version because the newer versions have fixed it because they knew it was a translation mistake. Why in the world would it say Jesus when it's talking about Joshua? Because Joshua is a bring over into the English, right, from this name, right? And so actually the Messiah of Israel had the same name as Joshua in the Hebrew spelling, and it's this name here. Now, when it's shortened, it will be Yeshua. Yeshua. Have you heard that before? Yeshua, meaning salvation or he saves, right? But that's a contraction form of a larger name, Yehoshua, 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 and that's the full form. So it would be like William and then Will. So Yehoshua would be that full, and then Yeshua would be, Yehoshua would be like William, right? And then Yeshua would be like Will. It's a shortened contraction, right? 
Now, amongst my people, there's a tradition handed down that we pronounce this in a different way. Uh, we have Yehoshua, but there were elders and older folk that would say, Yahusha, Yahusha. And I always thought about that, Yah, Yahusha in there. And you see, do you see that same thing? See before, you see that? And then you see that. Now, those two letters on the very end on the left side, that is the Sha. That's a Sheen and an Ayin. That comes from the root word Yasha, which means to deliver, to liberate, to free. So do you know in the Messiah's name, there's freedom, there's deliverance, there's healing, there's power. <laughs> Yahusha. This is so beautiful. And so let's just open up. Um, this is a traditional prayer just in, in, in respect of, of the culture of Yahadut. It says, Baruch Atah Hashem Eloheinu Melech HaOlam. And before Jews around the world study Torah, they say this prayer, and it's translated, Blessed art thou, you say Yudhe Wahe or Yudhe Vave, there, the sacred name of the Father, yeah, our power, King of the universe, who sanctifies us with your commands and commanded us to engross ourselves in the instructions of Torah. Now, what's interesting is the sages, who are called Kazal, right? Um, the sages said, why does the prayer say engross ourselves as opposed to study Torah? Why not use that root word, lamad, to study? Why use this word, right, la'asoch, to engross yourself? What does it mean to engross yourself in something? To just get lost in that thing, right? Yeah, to just be all in it. Now, see, everybody doesn't have time to study. So the sages said, because everybody doesn't have time to study and break out their books and their this and their that, but everybody, when they hear a word of Torah, can engross themselves in the meaning of even just one verse that they hear. Because there's life in those words. So today, you know, in our congregation, we're like... In the book of Acts, in our Messianic congregation, we, we're like the book of Acts and, and Eutychus. Remember, like, we, we'll go so long, we'll be like two, three hours. People, for you, Anybody familiar in the book of Acts where uh, Eutychus is sitting in the window and the apostle Shaul, Paul, is, is preaching and the, and the young brother falls asleep and falls down and dies? The apostle goes to lay hands on him, right? That's a great thing. You know, raise up, brother. And then he goes back to preaching until morning. You would figure he would get the message, right? So we, we come out of that tradition. And so even if we just have a few moments together, I want you to engross yourselves in the meaning of the text. So now, let's open up to Numbers 12. Numbers 12. Numbers chapter 12. Keeping in line a bit with the black history theme, in a sense, but going deeper into a word of life and power. This is the opening of the chapter. It says, Watetaber Miriam Weharon Bemoshe. Al odot haisha hakushit asher lachach ki isha kushit lachach. I know what you're talking about, brother. What was that? So I gave you a translation from the King James Version, and I'll talk about that in a minute, and then the complete Jewish Bible. You don't have a copy of that, go pick one up today. Give a lot of insight. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. So in, in, in Hebrew writing, points are always reintroduced again and again. So in other words, it may say, um, for, I'm just making this up, for his, 
his graces are abundant and his mercy as the sea. Right? Like it's saying the same thing. Like abundance represents the sea. So they'll repeat it. Well, here you see it says that Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he'd married. So we figure we're done. He married an Ethiopian woman. We're good. But then they say because he married an Ethiopian woman. Duh. We know, we, you just said that. So why are you saying it again? Because there's emphasis here. For you to really get what's going on. Complete Jewish Bible says Miriam and Aharon began criticizing Moshe on account of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had in fact married an Ethiopian woman. Now, there's an Ethiopian woman. Beautiful sister, a spinning image of her foremothers and forefathers. And I want that image to stay with us for a little while today. Do you know that I'm my ancestors' wildest dreams? To stand here today, to have this opportunity to be with you, I am their wildest dreams. Will Ford came in yesterday. He talked about so many powerful things. And he talked about how many people know Will and, and what he does when he has that, that, that kettle, that praying pot and all of that. Just so much to that that was so powerful. How enslaved people, I was telling the pastor about this earlier. They were beaten. He talks about a man having his back pickled. Pickled, meaning that once he was beaten within an ounce of his life, they would throw hot water or turpentine on the back. Because he wanted to pray. Think about that. Let that sink in and feel that pain, but also feel that power. They knew enough being miseducated. And as we talked yesterday, you don't start teaching African-American history with slavery. There were great empires, Ghana, Songhai, Mali. The most wealthy man in the history of the world was Mansa Musa from Timbuktu, one of the earliest universities in the world. They reduced a people to nothing because in order to conquer a people, you have to dehumanize them. That's how you can sleep at night when you don't think someone is human. And here are these uneducated people wearing tattered rags. As Will said, the world was not worthy of them. They didn't have systematic theology. They didn't understand hermeneutics. But they had a relationship with the Holy One of Israel. And they knew enough that there was power in the word, the spoken word. Yahushua Mashiach said, For the words I speak unto you are spirit, and they are life. There's power in the spoken word. The Messiah comes to convict us of even what is in our heart. But once you say it, you can't get it back. That's why Mashiach says every, and you hear me say Mashiach, that means Messiah in Hebrew. Mashiach says every idle word that a man speaks, he shall give account for in the day of judgment. Why? He didn't say every idle thought, even though he holds us accountable for our thoughts and says, if you think it in your mind, you have already committed the act. But he says, every idle word that you speak, you shall give an account for in the day of judgment. Because the spoken word is power. The book of Proverbs says, 
death and life are in the power of the tongue. But the translators translate the word death first. Why? They didn't say life and death was in the power of the tongue. Death and life. Because what you speak can immediately cause something to die. When Messiah saw that fig tree that wasn't bearing fruit, he said, cursed be that tree. Cursed be you and no fruit ever come from you again. And it said, on the morrow, when they walked by, it says, Kepha, Kepha Peter, it says he saw the fig tree and said, Rabbi, behold the fig tree that thou cursed. It is withered. Because there's power in your word to kill. And here these enslaved people being told that they couldn't read and they couldn't write upon penalty of beating and sometimes death, why would you want to keep people from reading and writing? One of the only books that was available was the Bible. Hmm. (laughs) They knew enough. Because I said to myself, why didn't you just pray in your mind? Why didn't you just think your prayer? They would gather together in groups and put that pot down and and, and speak into the pot so that so that it could muffle their voices so they could pray out loud so that their words would have power. So the text says. In verse one, and I'm going to read from the King James Version in honor of my ancestors, right? Because that would have been the Bible closest to what they would have been given. But you know, there was something produced called the slave Bible. It only had 10% of the Tanakh or the Old Testament in it. I wonder why. Because the Old Testament is rich in theme and yearning place in the world keep that away from them. And they took out Galatians 328. For there's neither Jew nor Greek nor bond nor free but all are one. Oh, can't let you get that. Marcus Garvey said liberate the minds of men their bodies will soon follow. Numbers 12 and 1 and, and Miriam and Aaron against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman. The Hebrew says, Kushit, Isha Kushit, the woman who was a Kushite. They spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Has Yudhewahe, ya indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken also by us? You know, Miriam was a prophetess, right? right? She was out there prophesying. So it's, it's, she's not lying. Aaron was told to be a mouthpiece, right? right? Yeah. For Moses, when he started saying, huh, I can't really speak all that well. Dude, you were in the most powerful position that one could be uh, under Pharaoh. What do you mean? He, he had some trepidation, right? So lying, creator was dealing with them. planet. Hmm. You know that you better be mindful of what you're against. Because this is a man who's got a little bit different calling than you. And you'd hey, why, hey.
you have children. Anybody have more than one? And then in the other room, you right? You don't care who's guilty at the moment. We'll sort that out, but you, you get your little heinies out here right now. So the creator calls, Yah calls them out and says, come you three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. Because you better do what daddy says. And it says, and Yudhewah came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle. Uh oh. He's manifesting now. And called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. So now you see, he called all three of the children out, but then he said, you two, come here. All right. And he said, hear now my words. Listen to what I'm saying. If there be a prophet among you, then I, yud he wah yud he will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so who is faithful in all my house. I talk to you in dreams. I give you a little smattering of my presence. Moses isn't like that. He's a personal chosen vessel of mine. With him, I will speak mouth to mouth even apparently, leaving no doubt. Not in dark speeches. Oh, that's, that's powerful. That's a whole other drasha or sermon right there. He doesn't speak to Moses in dark speeches. He doesn't say stuff to him where Moses is like, oh, I gotta scratch my head on this, let me go seek on that. He says, I'm a parent with him, I don't speak in dark sentences. Remember Messiah said, unto you it is given to understand all the mysteries of the kingdom, but to they who are without, I speak in parables. This is, this is powerful. And the anger of Yudhe was kindled against them and he departed. That's key. So you come up against those that you should not come up against. Maybe I'm talking to somebody today. You speak against people that you shouldn't be speaking against. And you don't recognize the authority that they're walking in. Then the anger of the creator will be kindled against you and he will depart. And then you'll look at yourself and say, my life's not going the way that it should be going. Things are in place. The question is, is there an Ethiopian woman in your life? Who is your Ethiopian woman? Moses wasn't in error for marrying the Ethiopian woman. He was free to do so. The creator is making that clear when he says, I speak with him apparently and not in dark speeches. If I didn't want this to take place, I would have told him no. And he would have obeyed because he's the meekest man on the face of the earth. So now we're going deeper. You, Aaron and Miriam, have a problem with authority. You have an issue with following leadership because you believe that you have your own gift, your own connection to the Almighty, and you want some spotlight for yourself. Wow. <laughs> oh, I can get my little dance, and he speaks to me, and I've got all of the gifts operating. I had a brother tell me, <laughs> I've got all nine gifts in operation, brother. <laughs> I said, but is your life living up to that? Because every gift we shouldn't receive if we're not ready for it. <laughs> it says, the cloud departed, verse 10, from off the tabernacle. Behold, Miris white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my master, my lord, wow, now you're humble, brother. Now I'm your lord, your Adon. In Hebrew, they would say, I'm your Adon now. Oh, I'm your master now. Oh, 
once you've got smitten, now the humility comes. We don't want to be in a place where we have to be smited in order to be humble. That's good. So what's happening is now he says he's going to intercede on behalf of his sister. I beseech you, lay not the sin upon us. Wait a minute. You're talking to Moses. Why aren't you talking to the creator that you say he speaks to me too? You should be saying, oh, yeah. Please don't do it. No, he said, my Lord Moses, don't, don't do this. Now you recognize the power. So when you walk in that authority, the power must be recognized. Lay not this sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly and wherein we have sinned. See, in order to get the leprosy off of you, you have to repent. Even if you're not the one who gets the leprosy. If it's a loved one, if it's a friend or a companion that you in cahoots with to do the wrong thing and they get smitten, you have to intercede and you have to ask for forgiveness for your part in it as well. Wow. That's good. You can't say, oh, I, I, I didn't do that. You were there. You were privy. Oh, it's your sin as well. Let her not be as one dead of whom the flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried. See, now you're recognizing order. So you should have come to me properly and then instead of putting yourself up there. And it says, and Moses cried unto you, Dewey, he's saying, heal her now. Oh, yeah, I beseech you. And you, Dewey, he said to Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, should she not have been ashamed seven days? In other words... I'll heal her, but she's going to deal with this for a little bit. Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. Hmm, there's so much here. There's so much here. And after that, let her be what? Received again. Because sometimes when you do the crime, you have to do the time. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward, the people removed from Hazeroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. Isn't that interesting? That whole chapter is like this enthralling kind of thing going on. And at the end, they picked up camp and moved on. <laughs> because when you get it right with your brother, and your sister, and with Yah himself, then and only then can you move on. That's good. That's good. That's good. I thank you so much. Pastor, you may come. Anyone after as we do what we do, I don't mind praying for you. Um, thank you. Grace and peace. Thank you for watching this message today. We ask that you hit the subscribe button and share this message on all social platforms. Man, we are hoping that you were encouraged and blessed by what you heard. And we cannot wait to see you next time.